And so this is the major outbreak of a strain of Ebola virus that in some outbreaks has killed up to 90% of the people that it infects. Dr. Robert Gary is at the epicenter of a very contagious and very deadly disease in Sierra Leone, Ebola. And there is no cure. Ebola virus in particular will replicate in a lot of cells in your body. It causes damage and destruction. Mostly uh, the damage is to your blood vessels. So it basically makes them permeable. That's why uh, organ systems break down. That's why you get bleeding uh, in the skin or from the mouth or the eyes. So it basically just takes over many, many cells in your body. And if you're in, it replicates so fast that your immune system can't combat it so it can't stop it from spreading. The virus is originally spread by animals, particularly monkeys, chimpanzees, and bats, which are sometimes part of a West African diet. Once a human contracts the disease, it can spread easily by the exchange of body fluids. Ebola was first discovered in Congo in 1976, and before now has never been diagnosed in this part of the continent. It has been diverging, so it's been here uh, in the Ghanaian rainforest for probably over a hundred years. Now that rainforest covers a lot of Guinea, uh, the eastern part of Guinea. It comes down into the Kenema district here and over into Liberia, and that's where all the cases have been so far. Yeah, but it's like a triangle, and boop, right in the middle of nowhere, in the bush, it's a forested, rainforested area, the disease occurred. It went to Liberia, it went to, uh, it, it went to Guinea. Hey, I mean, we are the, 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 the same area, the same people. The Sierra Leone government is working closely with Robert Gary and his team to stop the disease in its tracks. The data collection and laboratory work are occurring here at Kinema Government Hospital, where all suspected cases are analyzed and patients are being treated. International partners are beginning to arrive on the scene. Infected in, in Daru with contact with a patient, went back to her village and died in Jala. Temporary measures are in place for a possible yeah. influx of new patients. This is a tent uh, that was donated by Medicine Sans Frontiers, Doctors Without Borders, for Ebola virus patients. Uh, the structure that uh, is being built is to basically isolate and protect the tent. We don't want people coming into the tent, so it's going to isolate it. But there'll also be an area for the healthcare workers to suit up into their personal protective equipment uh, before they go in to uh, treat the Ebola virus patients. Healthcare workers are at very high risk of contracting the disease. That's why 50 miles away, staff of the United Methodist Mercy Hospital in Bow gather to discuss an emergency preparedness plan. So how do we protect ourselves? Number one, we have to presume that every subject that we see here has Ebola and protect ourselves appropriately. The staff learns that gloves, gowns, and other personal protective equipment is their best defense. There, there is a sense of fear. I know uh, we don't want them to panic, but fear is necessary. Because if, if the fear is, is not there, they may not take steps to prevent themselves being infected. We need to make sure that this disease stays in the, in, in the locality where it is and does not spread. Right now, Ebola is in only one corner of the nation. Should it spread to major cities like Bo and Freetown, its contagious nature could be catastrophic. The government and the United Methodist Church have stepped up the information campaign but it's impossible to quarantine a whole region. As for many people in the East, in some of our villages, there is like an enigma. No, it doesn't exist. And when that is always difficult to overcome. Nurses caring for the Ebola patients in the government hospital stress that knowledge is power. We are really working very hard and we want God's intervention for us to really have survival. 